So we are the same. Yeah. And then I only have two names left over. I mean, there might be oh. some last minute. Yeah, me and the guy next to me. What names do you have? I have the Yama Kodo, and I have the and I have the Yama Kodo, and then I have the Yama Kodo. Okay, so one is Kate Nash, Kate Nash from Serbia. You're second on the list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and flyers too. But I have some flyers. And you can leave the flyers anywhere. Yeah, uh, I'm doing a museum. I think that I speak to him. Hi, <laughs> I'm Veerle from France. Veerle okay. from France, okay. your company. Okay. For an pizza? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Okay. It's I saw it yesterday twice. Yeah, you saw it twice? I saw it in the morning. Oh, that's and nice. And then I wanted to see it again. And I, I found a ticket for the 6. Yeah, 6 o'clock. Yeah. And I went there. That's and nice, because then you see the difference. Can, I, can I read your name? Yeah. 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 Because it's the theater, and then it is a, there is a company depending uh, on. No, it's, it's in fact it's we don't have fixed artists. It's more like a, it's more like an artistic production. Yes. Yeah. Okay, but I have like a, how do you say leaflets? Oh, yeah. Maybe I have one. Yeah. Can you if you read? Yeah. Can have a this is what we do. Branch. Yes. This, we make it's in English too. Yeah. We make productions. Yes. We, what we do, we are a theater that uh, has a festival. Yeah, we making 
uh, workshops with youngsters. We go international. We do all kinds of stuff. Okay, but it's uh, yeah, it's uh, not a company as we, we make like two, three productions a year, three years. But it's always with other artistic groups. Okay, okay. But of course, some of the artists are linked to drums, like Randy, the, the performer. Yeah, Pika. Yeah, he made already ten productions for us, and the new uh, next season is going to make another one for us. So we have like artists that are linked, but they are not all the time uh, working for us because they do other projects and because we don't have the funds to really uh, pay them for. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I see. Okay, so that's can I check out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, you can. Thank you. So it's a little. I don't know how you call it. It's company, but not like a company. It's always the same yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I'm the director and you are of the house and I'm the chief. Uh, but this is private or is it uh, as funded as it's founded as a from the Spanish government? Okay. Great. Yeah. So it's not really uh, I've heard a lot of you of your work, but uh, it's the first time I see it. Ah, yeah, you didn't see, but a lot of people saw the previous one. Ask them about terrorism. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's in on our website. You can see the new shows and also in English what we do. Okay. It's sometimes difficult to explain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's keep, it keeps changing, maybe. Of course, because we have uh, we have other creations and touring and yeah. yeah. You want to take my phone? Yeah, of course. This is a theater company from Catalonia. Yeah. If I just yeah. can yeah. talk, yeah. can we ask you to uh, make it a nice place to tell us all the yeah. projects in Spanish? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank Commence pas, il va. Well, I know about 
projects from around the world. My name is Siri and I'm from the board of uh, Association uh, Norway and got the great pleasure to be the hostess uh, of this informal meeting which we have at every festival and every gathering and also hello to those watching us from a live stream today. Uh, that's the reason I'm using a microphone and I have to ask all of you to use it even though we're in such a small uh, venue, so it might feel weird, but it's for the, the greater audience uh, out there. We have one hour today, so it's quite a strict uh, schedule. I have uh, seven uh, who uh, said in advance they wanted to talk today, so I can promise you there will be time for any last minutes, but if there is, uh, just raise your hand at the end, and I'll uh, put you up on the list, and hopefully some more will be able to present projects. Uh, that's the only thing uh, that we have to, in common today, it's that we're presenting projects. It's everything from uh, small performances to big festivals, etc. We'll start out with Realize and the project exchange. Here is yours. Mm -hmm. uh, hello everybody, uh, I'm Realize. Uh, and I'm a creative producer based in Scotland. Hello, I'm Melly Brooms. I'm a dancer, a choreographer, and director based in Glasgow. And I'm Ashanti Harris. I'm a visual artist and researcher, also based in Glasgow. And collectively, uh, we run an organization called Project X. So we're just gonna show a little video to you to get started. Project X celebrates and champions dance within the African diaspora in Scotland through workshops, performances, artistic opportunities, discussions, film screenings, a symposium and more. We platform contemporary and traditional dance forms whilst broadening perceptions and representation. some of the work that we do um, and basically we are working kind of across four strands um, so we have community which is our work that we do uh, with children young people and adults and that's workshops um, we have conversations so like the symposium we mentioned but we also hold a uh, host different events and conversations um, kind of to do with the sector and increasing representation in Scotland um, we also have uh, our exchange which is our kind of international uh, collaborations, which uh, Melly will tell you a little bit more about. Uh, and we have Platform, and that's uh, our work to support artists who identify uh, as uh, people of colour and as well as having heritage within the African Caribbean diaspora. Um, and uh, Platform also includes our kind of professional productions as well. Um, so our work with young people kind of come a little bit <coughs> almost a little bit backwards. So we started by doing workshops and our intention was to teach people in Scotland about African and Caribbean heritage and its place within Scottish cultural heritage. Um, so we started doing summer schools with young people where we would choose a few 
listening and you kind of expand on listening with your question maker and learn lots of different kinds of questions. And you'd also learn about the kind of, uh, the, the sort of tonicals of how, um, how uh, sort of traditional dances have led to a lot of the contemporary dances that you see today. Um, and from that, we started doing a lot more, kind of thinking about carnival as, as a performance and also thinking about how we could use the same format to create performances, not just for young people, but with young people. So our next project um, was called Chronicles, and it was in collaboration with, oh, you just turn off the <laughs> It was in collaboration with the National Museum of Scotland and National Theatre of Scotland, and we worked with uh, young people aged 15 to 25, who we called our young experts, and we looked at uh, how museums represent history and heritage, and how we can kind of subvert the ways that people interact with uh, museums, kind of thinking about the museum's roles within co colonization and how we can kind of address that in the way that we want to look at what our history and our heritage is. So this was a traveling performance. It was done in the style of an audio, uh, audio call performance where everybody watching had their headsets and all of the writing in it was written by the young people and uh, the young people led everyone <laughs> <laughs> the young people led everyone kind of on a, a tour through the museum. It incorporated dance and theatre, and it was just a really, really brilliant, uh, brilliant show. And then we also had, what were the other pictures on? Oh, Carnival. Okay, so then the <laughs> Carnival performance was it. It's one of, uh, one of our most recent performances as well, was um, called Ocean and the Gold, if I'm kind of saying that, we fail. And that was taking uh, Caribbean folk tales about a North Sea and African folk tales about uh, ocean and looking at how we could kind of rewrite some of those stories based on the kids who come to our groups, kind of contemporary experience of living in a city in Scotland. Um, so that was performed as part of the European Championships uh, across two different outdoor stages as well in Glasgow. Um, and I'll just hand over to Mary to tell you about our current project. I uh, just talked to you a little bit about Project Exchange. Um, this is a conversation with artists and makers um, that are potentially not in Scotland. We're kind of, it's kind of a broad term, but mainly we're having a conversation with international artists. Um, most recently, we put on a collaboration or a response to um, a performance called, mm -hmm. uh, who was it, Rachel, Lung, Rachel Young Nightclubbing, where we had 14 choreographers and makers that presented 45 second videos in response to Rachel Young's nightclubbing. And our most current uh, project is with Dance International Glasgow, where we're platforming an artist from Lagos and two artists from England and Wales is from Scotland. Um, overall project exchange is just about being able to talk and communicate with people and being aware that there are, there are borders and what that means and how we get people in and out of the country um, and how we continue like a creative dialogue. Uh, we are here today um, with Imaginate to create, hopefully uh, create a new uh, theatre, children's theatre piece. So we're doing research by watching, watching work and hopefully be able to have a conversation with people in this room or our participants. If you would like to chat to us um, or see some of our work, our website is www.projectxplatform.co.uk. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Next up is from Assete Belgium, Yannick Baudon. Thank you, Siri. Um, hi, everyone. <coughs> um, I'm, I'm very happy to, uh, to, to present you the, uh, the new festival that Assete Belgium uh, has uh, created. It's a uh, very unique festival because Assetus Belgium is a very, very young association. It was created four years ago. Um, and before that, the, um, the three communities, linguistic communities in Belgium, did not very connect. And uh, we decided to connect finally. So what was totally unthinkable, like four or five years ago, now became reality. <laughs> and um, we decided uh, in an assembly, general assembly, 
that would be very nice to um, to create a, a whole festival, a Belgian festival. What does that mean, a Belgian festival? A Belgian festival is a festival with shows from the French-speaking part, the Flemish part, and the German-speaking part. So you see, you have three different communities, so it's not really easy to connect all those people. And since it's a Belgian festival, the festival will be implemented in three different cities, in Brussels, uh, which is the capital of Belgium, in Liège, which is in Wallonia, French-speaking part, and in Ghent, which is in Flanders. And the festival, um, well, of course, we had many, many ideas, and we wondered for, for several times what kind of name we should take for that festival. So there were B giant, there were Belgian for beginners. <coughs> there was one I really loved, uh, but it was too alcoholic. It was called Triple Deluxe. <laughs> so if you know what is a Belgian beer, triple beer, it was like, ah, that's really, no. So we decided to call it Barak Belgique. <clears throat> the idea is that Barak for uh, Flemish, for French, Francophone, and also for the German, it means something. You know, it's a, a Barak is a, <laughs> it's a kind of a house with lopsided walls. Uh, it's kind of realistic, improvised shelter. It's a little bit like Belgium. So that's why we, we, we decided to call it Barak. We really have a strong sessions of brainstorming. And in this Barak Belgique, which will be held from the 8th of November till 11th of November, you can see here. So please bookmark the dates in your calendar. You will have a chance, ladies and gentlemen, to watch 15 shows from the three different communities. Uh, I, I will not go through all the shows, of course, because it would be too long. But you will find uh, here downstairs uh, the, the, the flyers of the festival. And also you will find all the needed information on the barakbelgique.be uh, website, where you have all the information about uh, how to come to Brussels, uh, what to do. Well, mainly what you have to do is to, uh, to watch shows, to party, to network. There will be lots of, uh, of course, Belgian beers, fries. You will be able to buy some chocolate for your loved ones. Um, so there will be many things to do for those uh, four days. You will be traveling in Belgium, so not only in Brussels, but also in, so in, in Liège, which is like 80 kilometers from Brussels, and in Ghent, which is like 60 kilometers from Brussels, we will or organize everything, arrange ev everything so that you won't feel alone in this weird country. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, and I, well, we all hope that uh, you will be having fun uh, during this festival. We're very happy to uh, to welcome all on board and all delegates uh, to share with us uh, during the network meeting, to share with us um, concerning the different aesthetic, the different languages we have in Belgium, which makes the diversity of the, of the country, and not on the contrary, just to have one small language. No, there are three languages and more, actually. Um, so you will be able to watch shows for very small children, for adolescents. You will be able to show, uh, to see uh, dance theater with text, best takes theater, installation theater, or any kind of theater. So please bookmark the dates on your calendar, and I'm sure you will have a wonderful time in, uh, in Belgium between uh, November 8th and 11th. Next up from the Connect of uh, EU program with Nelnel. I don't need anything because I can't show anything. I want to present you a new um, 
European cooperation granted by um, the EU, which will start next year, um, called Connect, um, Connect Up. And the leading organization is the University of Agde here in Kristiansand, and one of our um, partners is the APK in Norway. In many of our European countries, um, we see that our societies are in a process of a cultural, social, and political division. And we that are 40 European theater companies, festivals, and two universities um, have um, a mind to work against that with our audience, to diversify our audience. Therefore, we will produce, we want to have festivals, but we also think that we need um, to train our artists. Um, the ability um, to work as a theater mediator, to bring a new part or new part groups to our audience, not only for one production, so on a long term, and that they can um, mix with the existing audience, which is in most of our countries the white middle class. Therefore, we think we need a special effort to train artists. And the university will have an e-learning program for theater mediation, which is, as you can imagine, as e-learning open for others as well. And that's why I'm, I'm talking to you, because we want to invite RTK members all over the world to be part of that e-learning program. We will have three hubs um, beyond Europe where we invite artists for um, a workshop a week and after that um, they can work with our European partners on that e-learning that e-learning will be a process <coughs> of a giving a moderation a guidance from artists within our group and a collection of direct working examples, best practice examples, an exchange by um, chat rooms, webinars, video tutorials, so that um, we hope within one and a half year, and that will be the running time of each um, program, we can learn from different examples from each other, and the artists will get um, a kind of a moderation from experts here of the University in Acta and the University Derby in the UK. It's even um, that we didn't start till now um, that I only have a web address for you, but we don't find anything behind it. Mm -hmm. um, but we will have workshops and a seminar in Tokyo. And the first run of our e-learning program will be um, in spring 2021, so a little bit of time till then. But we thought, because we are here in Christen, that we should at least start with you and give you the information. Okay, thank you. Serbia, to tell us about a new festival. Diane. Hello. 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 Um, and I'm an actress, and I'm a theater pedagogue, and I'm a president of Asitesh Serbia, still. And this is? I'm Milena De Polo, not so hard to pronounce. I'm a vice president <coughs> of Asitesh Serbia. I'm a playwright and dramaturg. I work in a, an institutional theater in Belgrade called Boško Buha. And my English is usually very good, but excuse me for holding on to this paper when I start talking about our project. 
And that's because we have, can you imagine, Asitesh Serbia is one of the founders of Asitesh International in 1965. I have found this in our archive. It was a previous, and I, I mean, we are, you know that we have been some other country at that time, but it was also the, uh, another time. And um, it's interesting that we, as Asitesh Serbia and Asitesh Yugoslavia, X1, we never had an Asitesh festival. Asitesh Serbia is actually now, in the last three years, trying to find a way how to strengthen the power of the membership, and one of the ways, the best one is to make, really make Asitesh national, national festival. So I have a wonderful uh, colleagues in my in a board. They are all women, but they are all very keen on working on it on the, on, the, on this festival of the concept. And we have worked for two years to make one, and um, it is very, very nice that we had uh, in May the very first. Um, some, we had a very first festival in May from 9 to 11 this year, and I would like to uh, ask Milena to give you an uh, idea about the concept of it, because it's quite different. I think so. Yes, we think it's very unique, because it was made up by uh, two theater directors, one actress, one playwright, two producers, and one choreographer. That's, uh, that's, our, that's our team, our executive board. So what's so unique and special about our festival? Uh, uh, it's a national festival uh, that uh, for all ages, for all forms of performance arts, for all members of Asitesh Serbia who are willing to take part this year, uh, there were nine productions. We hope it will just become bigger and bigger and we're certain it will. Uh, about the concept. Um, we don't have a figure of a selector and we don't have a typical jury, which we think it's very good. Uh, our members are all selectors. They all pick one of the productions they think it's the best to, persip to participate in the festival. And uh, each production uh, has one representative in the jury. So uh, and, uh, we, uh, after in the end of every festival day, all the members of jury gather and talk about what they've seen every day. And that's the way we, we worked on uh, communality. We, want to, we wanted our members to see each other, talk to each other, to, to get familiar to what the others are doing. So we succeeded that. Uh, we have also another jury. It's the pedagog jury who watch, all the, who watch the festival program from, from the other perspective. We have three members of the pedagog jury. And uh, each year we have a different host of the festival. So the festival was in Belgrade this year, but it will. the plan is to move all over Serbia and different families in Belgrade also. <coughs> uh, what else do you want to say? Yeah. Yeah, help me now. Yeah, we just um, want to say that the, the all the, there are no limits about the genre of the of the theater performances. The only limited, the only uh, the, what we ask have been asked. We asked our members. This is our members' festival. That's clear, isn't it? So the, what we have asked them just to make the limitation in the year when it comes to the first uh, production. It means we had this festival in 2019 based uh, and selected the performances that have been productive in 2018 from 1st of January to 31 of December. So that is what that means that the nine performances we had have been totally different for different uh, age of, of the children and audiences and also a different genre. You know, it was a contemporary dance. It was also included one uh, completely like this, for example, performance that uh, is really interactive with the children. And it's uh, about the epic, you know, the, that is a holy epic story about our national nationality. And everything is completely different, very, very modern. And then the classical mainstream thing. So it is quite Classic. hard. It is, it is very hard to, to talk about different different, different productions. But these people who are coming from different part of the uh, mainstream or freelancers or, you know, the, the very modern or very classical theater, they have managed at the end of the everyday 
and even at the end of the festival to make a consensus about what is, what is it. And that was the goal, to talk. What is the theater in Serbia now? And the awards. Uh, I'm honored to pronounce <laughs> the winners of our first festival. Uh, the jury has talked for much time and we couldn't decide between two performances. The, uh, the first one was a puppet production from uh, Novi Sad, the youth theater uh, Novi Sad. Uh, it was based on Jack London's color from the, of the wild, from the wild, I don't know the exact English translation. Uh, it's a production, it's a complete theater with uh, live music, with live uh, sounds, with puppets, with actors, really uh, overwhelming experience. And the other, I'm very proud to say this in Norway because the other winner was a production based on Edmund Lou's uh, Kirk Vovadis uh, book for children by the theater I worked in. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> I made a dramatization and it's uh, pro uh, produced by the theater I work in, Boško Puha Theater. Mm -hmm. okay. And okay. the pedagogue was also uh, selected this uh, play based on the Erwin Blue to, to award. So we don't have many, many awards, only two of them. And that's for the main performance in last year. And we would like very much to have it like uh, every year, each year in a different city. And we would like very much to invite you next time when we find out exactly the city and turn when it comes. You are very welcome to see us and to help us to be seen outside from our country and also to take a part in a conversation with our uh, <coughs> members of the jury who are really members of Asitor Serbia that are come, they are going to be in, in the jury next year. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> next up is Yvette, our dear president. work, but if they don't, it's fine. Um, so I wanted to talk about uh, Cradle of Creativity, which has just happened. I've literally <laughs> just come from Cradle of Creativity in Cape Town. And when I look around, I see many people here who were at the Congress, the Cradle of Creativity in 2017. And it was an incredibly special event. That was the closing event. And because of uh, the success of that event, Acetate South Africa decided to do this mad, crazy, stupid thing, <laughs> which is to host a international Theatre for Young Audiences festival every two years in South Africa as a traveling festival, just to, just to make things more complicated <laughs> for us, Um But the first one um, is uh, was in Cape Town. So we wanted to be in a space which we had some knowledge of now having hosted um, it in 2017. Um, and so uh, what this was our uh, brochure you would have seen, and it was an event which had 32 productions across four venues. The main venue was the Baxter Theatre. We were also in two smaller theatres, Magnet Theatre and Theatre Arts Admin Collective, and in one of the townships in Lunga, uh, at a place called Gugastebe. And there was international work, Unfortunately, not as much African work as we would have liked. We had two African productions from outside of South Africa, but it is one of the hardest things in the world to get the funding to bring African artists to a festival. And, you know, um, we have to find ways to shift that. But, uh, and because this is one of the main reasons for doing this platform is to be able to present African work. But we had a lot of international work. We had, of course, a lot of South African productions. Um, there's a magnet theatre production called Rotten Number Corridor, uh, Lumka puppet play for uh, six, five, five, six year olds, um, some early years work. Um, you, you can uh, meet Margot Wood from Sail Away up in the corner there. You can meet Jane, um, who was involved in uh, the company Tree Song, who's on the Next Generation um, program. Um, some more South African work. This is more sort of for the 10 to 13 year olds. And this is uh, some of the teamwork. 
this was our opening production, Burning Rebellion, which is speaking very much to what's happening in terms of climate change at the moment, and is a very powerful opener. This was our closing production, Hani the Legacy, which is a fantastic hip-hop kind of answer to Hamilton, but about Chris Hani, one of the great South African heroes of the struggle, who was assassinated. Um, and uh, this was Guga Stebe and The Hub. And of course, there was a conference program. We had a BRICS program. So we had uh, Brazil, Russia, India, and China all represented. Uh, and we had a lot of conversations around making work, uh, a, a lot of different kind of themes. We had two very important projects within the festival, which I'd like to just highlight, because they will be ongoing. The one is a project to develop dance for young audiences in South Africa. We have an extraordinary range of contemporary dance, um, fantastic choreographers, fantastic dancers, but virtually no dance specifically made for young audiences. So we are in a partnership with Distilta, and um, it's been a kind of a long process of development, and we had around South Af 10 South African choreography, uh, choreographers who were able to do workshops with Distilta in Cape Town, and then to have other workshops and to see work together and to talk about dance for young audiences. And this is going to lead into a bigger residency and workshop program which will be happening uh, next year. And then the second one, which was a really exciting project for us, was um, a project with Flemish artists around child participation. And we were able to work with three different companies, with Bronx, with um, Cooper Pitre, and with uh, company Babri, uh, to explore different approaches and different uh, strands, if you like, within child participation. So the child is a creative collaborator uh, in making work, the child as a dramaturg to work being made, and theatre mediation, exploring that space of, of child participation. And it was a very rich, challenging series of workshops, um, and we are going to continue the process. We don't know exactly what shape that will take. We're going to have conversations here to talk about it. Um, but it was really exciting, and this is one of the the groups of children who were involved in the project. So we had three Flemish artists, each working with a different group of South African artists and with a group of children of different ages. One group was around eight, one group was around 10, and one group was kind of teen, 15, 15 year olds. Um, and then of course there were the, were the audiences, and I want to say thank you to those of you who gave money to the Bus a Child to Cradle campaign, because there they are on the bus coming. <laughs> And you made that possible, so thank you very, very much. Um, but really, it is one of the huge challenges of doing something like this in South Africa, and we got virtually no official funding um, from government. It was, you know, how to support audiences to see the work, because it's all very well to have this beautiful work, but if only those people with money can pay for it, what's the point? You know. So it was really about trying to build access as well. And then there were lots of other workshops. I've mentioned some more dance workshops. We had a benefit concert also to <laughs> raise more money in the middle, <laughs> middle of everything. Uh, we had some site-specific performances. Uh, and it was, I think, what I would really like to say about it is that it had a, a fantastic feeling. It really had such an amazing feeling of sharing, of learning, of engagement from people. And while the size of the event was much smaller than obviously the Congress in 2017, uh, it felt like the richness of the exchange was really there. So what I want to say to you all is that it's happened once, it can happen, <laughs> it can happen again. It might kill me, but, <laughs> but, it, can, but it will happen again. And next year, uh, no, not next year, 2021, 2021, it'll be at the Market Theatre in Johannesburg. And one of the best things to come out of this festival was the fact that we got the Market Theatre to commit publicly to hosting it in 2021 <laughs> and to helping us fundraise for 2021, which is great. So um, it really is a space for intercultural exchange. It's a space for you to come and see African and South African work. It's a chance for you to work with us in different ways through different kinds of projects. If you've got ideas, we're very open to ideas. We really want to make this an open invitation for uh, you to engage with Africa through Cradle of Creativity. Thank you. The next speaker is up is from our Next Generation uh, program, Rachel Betts. Um, so yeah, I'm Mark 
Next Generation, uh, which is an amazing week. Um, and I just wanted to come up and talk today because um, I uh, have written a play and it's a project called As If You Were Infinite um, and it explores parent-child relationships and it asks who are the parents, who are the kids and who is protecting who. Um, and I went to Tweetat, uh, best of all not this year but last year, and the work there that I was seeing from different countries and different places I found really striking and interesting. Um, and there was a company called Cabinet K, we do a lot of work with adult and children together. Um, and that's something I'm really interested in as well. So this, uh, I'm going to show you a trailer of the piece, um, which has been supported by a company called Feed With Sleep, who also explore, uh, through one of their pieces, Men and Girls Dance, how men, uh, how men and girls can be together in pos positive and interesting ways on stage. So I'll just show you the piece, and then I'll kind of tell you why I'm talking. beautiful story of what it means to be a child, of what it means to be a parent, and the ebb and flow between the two. I watched it with my beautiful daughter, and we hugged the whole way through. It was a lovely way to love each other, and I really enjoyed it. Wishing it were different. Or wishing it could change. Or having to do this stupid <laughs> fucking speech. And vulnerable. And vulnerable. End of full stop. Exclamation mark. So that was, um, that was just after a week's R&D with uh, the professional actors working with young people and the children we did an audition at that stage, it was just an open workshop for young people to come along. Um, but the reason, and here's some pictures from the next week of R&D as well, are you okay just to show some of them without being afraid? The ones where I just did black and white ones? Um, but yeah, I'm interested in how adult bodies and young bodies can be together on stage. And I'm interested in how childhood is different in different cultures and different countries. So, um, and the play is a kind of mosaic of text form scenes of different uh, angles on parent-child relationships. So I'm interested in kind of new forms as well. And I just think it would be really interesting if anyone wants to like meet me for a tea or a conversation, there's a really great fund in the UK called Develop Your Creative Practice. I could apply for that to come and sit in a rehearsal room or work with someone or have a conversation about... I find it interesting just where I am, how those relationships are and what it means to be a child and a parent and a teenager. But I think I find it even more interesting to think about how that could work cross-culturally and what that could teach me or bring to the piece that I don't already know and what the young people uh, would say about that process and how that would be different. So yeah, uh, I'd love to connect with some people in different places that's the main reason I'm showing this. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel.
Rachel. And next up is a member of uh, Association Norway, Yvonne. While Imon is uh, getting ready, uh, this is the last name on my list. So is there anyone last minute who wish to uh, present something? Just uh, raise your hand or come talk to me in the corner and I'll put you on the list. Yeah, no worries. Uh, yeah, I just decided to raise spontaneously to take this chance. Very scary. <laughs> um, yeah. So here is the wind coming and then I'm taking the wind. Hello, everybody. Yvonne, please use the oh, mic. Yeah. It's not in the streaming. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Yvonne. I'm a physical actress working with a physical theater without language. So this is really scary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fascinated with materials, finding out how to tell stories through the interaction with materials, different materials. Um, and every material has a quality, like every person has a quality. And there are stories you can tell with some of these materials and others you can't. But what is very fascinating for me is the, it's natural law, how we relate to materials is also how we relate to uh, people. Uh, physical laws <coughs> is not only for materials but also for us, and but we human beings often forget that. So um, this is uh, my solo performance where I started this kind of work, uh, telling stories uh, through um, different kinds of latex balls, different sizes. And uh, we can just look at it a little bit. Um, yes, I think that's it, and then I talk
Ja, så jeg utviklet det og tenkte egentlig voksen publikum, men så var det jo også at det kom jo også barn, og de syntes det var kjempeviktig. Oi, så jeg er ikke en veldig konsjent person om språket. Sorry. Yes, hva sa jeg? Ja, det var for adult, men det kom også familier til performance, og de barna likte det, og de syntes det var veldig fun, de forstod det, og det feedback jeg ga var alltid, vel, Very different stories. Some said it was about pregnancy. Another friend of mine, he is a theologian, and he thought, oh, it was just like this philosophy about this guy he read about. And so all these stories came to me. So it was very fascinating that everybody sees different stories. In the, and then also, out there, the small kids, um, a five year old said, yeah, you, it was enough with just one little boy, right? Because I'm trying to then get control of all these boys. And yeah. So that was very fascinating to me. And then I started to think, okay, let's also investigate into the uh, specific audiences. So we made a performance for um, uh, three to six year olds. And then uh, we tried out one and two year olds. And then, um, and it, it is very fascinating how fascinated kids are with objects too. And I thought when they told me I should make a performance for this young audience, I thought, no, they don't need to be I they should go into forest and play. But then when we tried it out, I mean these one and two year olds they were just so fascinated and so uh, with it. Because I think it is the material, it's natural laws that are working on different levels. So anyway, that's me artistically trying to, uh, yeah. So I think uh, now we are working on the third one, and it's for the babies. It's the first time we, we're gonna try out that, uh, how it works with this uh, scenic material with babies. But I would like just to show you uh, one, the, when we tried out uh, the performance for the one and two year old, the reaction of this kindergarten. Uh, I thought that was very, After that experience, I thought I just have to continue with investigating in uh, in that. Oop, uh, and then they have to open it, full screen, and then uh, and sound. Yeah, let's get rid of good sound because there's no sound. Well, perhaps it's and. Um, not on, and uh, yeah. yeah, then you have to go back yeah. here. And it's a very simple action. I just open a bag with balls, 500 of them. So that's what I'm working with, and uh, and I also hope to uh, to reach out uh, to different audiences. Uh, would be perfect for the festival in Belgium, Bar Barak, 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 Barak. Barak. <laughs> because there's no language, but it's stories anyway for all ages. So 
So oh, the Flemish and the <laughs> French and the German can understand. <laughs> okay, thank you for me. We have a couple of minutes uh, left. So the last presentation will Sean Lee. You here? Sorry if the pronunciation is bad. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Chung Lee. Actually, this is a very, very, very last minute thing. I was actually here because I was attending the presentation for you guys actually. I didn't know what was happening. Then I saw so many wonderful works and I was like, I really want to uh, let you know about our company and I really want to let you guys know we are really happy to cooperate and create more positivities in the future. Um, actually myself, as a, I'm sorry for, I have no videos anything, I didn't prepare anything, but here is a short introduction about our company. Uh, we can pass around and you guys can get to know a little bit about us. Actually myself is a actress, singer, songwriter, um, and I started to work with this company called the Song Mark um, from 2017, end of 2017, and at the time I didn't know where I was going. Um, so as I know, uh, we were in the previous three years, we were doing all the classic things like orchestras. And from 2019, we are now building a space for a family. This is a very new thing for us, and I am very excited about that. Um, that is one of the reasons that we are here at AAG, um, to see all those great presentations and great performances. Um, so for this space, actually, we are four families. That's for uh, performances for kids from zero year old to 12, sometimes like eight year old for kids. And we really want to build a space like to make families get close to each other. That's one of the reasons we, are, we want to do that. Actually, my boss, he is a very successful businessman and every time uh, we introduce our company, our business, he always want to bring numbers on the table and let people know how many theaters we are cooperating with in China and how many shows we are doing. But be honest, he's not here today actually. So <laughs> be honest, um, as an artist myself, I really want to let people know what we are really doing um, from inside out, the art side of what we are doing. I, I'm not saying the number is not important. It is very important in business side. But to me, I'm more focusing on the art side. So I really want to let you guys know that um, all the theaters, even all the theaters we are cooperating, it's over 60 theaters in China now. Um, it's called Poly Theater, one of our biggest uh, cooperation partners. Um, so it's not only in the biggest city in China, like Shanghai, like Beijing, um, or Guangzhou, if some of you guys know. Um, it's all also in some like small cities in China, like probably some of you guys never heard of it. So that's that's the thing that people can't see the greatest art from the world, from um, like the families in Shanghai or Beijing, like the biggest cities. We, so that's what we really want to do. We want to bring the best art to different cities or towns. Even we will say, even China is big, like every town is like a city because we have so many people, it's big. But it is a little town actually. We really want to bring so many good art into those little towns and into those families and make them more unique and open their mind um, to have a better life or have a, a different aspect of arts. That's what we really want to do. So actually we do, uh, we don't have any uh, things here, but some of you guys, if you're interested in cooperation, uh, We'd like to talk to you in the future in a little bit. I do have a business card uh, with me. That's the um, contact thing that you can contact me. Um, so if you're interested in it, you're more than welcome to uh, come and talk to me. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. OK, that's it for today. Thank you for coming to listen to uh, projects from around the world. And thank you for those watching us at live stream, if there are any. And enjoy the rest of the festival. Thank you. Thank you.